triangle he attempts right here. Back to work. There it is. Triangle. Oh, that's tight. That's tight. Oh, he got him. There's going to be doubters again. I'll prove them wrong, and uh, I'll just keep doing what I do until everyone knows that I'm the best. In front of uh, Volk's house, scene one. Alexander, the great Volkanovs After a dominant seven-fight win streak in the UFC, expect some big, powerful shots. Here they come. Dishing out vicious ground and pound and devastating TKOs. Alexander the Great Volkanovski had finally earned his shot at featherweight gold against the division's reigning champion. Max Holloway, ladies and gentlemen. His, his fight IQ, he's superhuman. Oh, oh, look at the head oh, on oh, Holloway. You see, he's even listening to the commentary team. But just like every other fight before, people were doubting this five foot six destroyer. That's not my job to do the ranking, you guys do it. He's number one contender, he's the next cupcake on the list, and uh, I can't wait to taste the flavor. Holloway TKO round four. I gotta go with my boy Max. I'm gonna go with Max. The champ's gonna stay the champ. We got Holloway always. And why wouldn't they? Max Holloway was arguably the greatest featherweight in UFC history, next to Jose Aldo. But what most people misunderstood about this hard-working Australian was that he was no longer an underdog. He was an overlooked champion. And he trained like a champion, evolving from a pressure fighter with a ferocious overhand right, right too powerful. A wipeout. to a truly ruthless mixed martial arts beast. Volkanovski getting to the pressure now. This is what Volkanovski does. He's just constantly working. He doesn't let you rest. And so for this warrior from down under, there was never any doubt. I'd be lying if I said he wasn't a great champion. He's uh, very well rounded. Obviously, he's got his punching in volume, uh, his gas tank, and all these sort of things. These are things that I don't believe are big threats to me. You know, obviously, I've got the gas tank. If he really wants to come forward to me and try and break me, he's just going to fall into my game. I've got that power. So let's get it done. Bless your hands. My time. Nice low kick by Volkanovski. He really dug into that one. Leg kick after leg kick, Volkanovski controlled the distance against the range master in Holloway, often catching the blessed express with his patented overhand right. It seems clear Volk was outclassing Holloway in the first two rounds, but Max showed his championship fight IQ as the fight went on. In the end, the fight went to a decision. It was unanimous. After five rounds, the winner by unanimous decision and new undisputed UFC featherweight champion of the world, Alexander the Great With featherweight gold firmly wrapped around his waist, Volkanovski felt he'd finally silenced all the doubt. Um, again, obviously, man, he, he, he's one of the GOATs. I took out two of the GOATs back to back, you know what I mean? That puts me right up there. There was a lot of doubters there. I ended up looking at a pro's picks. My boy Max. Not one of them picked me. Not one. But I use that as motivation. I love it. They'll pick me next time. And it seemed like people were starting to put some respect on his name. You have just defeated the consensus greatest featherweight champion of all time. A lot of people had it five to nothing for you. Certainly one of the judges did as well. For Volkanovski to come in and beat Max Holloway, big deal. It's a big deal to do that. He's just, he just a nice guy. He's just a kind guy, you know, so it, it was cool. But really, it wasn't cool. What do you make of Max's continued insistence that he thought he won the fight? He keeps saying, I thought I did enough, the judges will break your heart, that sort of thing. What, what do you think when you hear that? I think he's just quite uh, salty about the whole thing, to be honest. Um, it's quite surprising. I didn't think he would uh, be a bit of a sore loser, but that's that's sort of my take on it. I thought I won the fight because I, I think I did, you know, and there's people out there in the world that think he did. He wants to say that he thought he won. I'm going to put him away, and I'm going to guarantee his head's going to be down while my hand gets raised because he, he's going to know he lost. And, uh, you know, if he wants to be sour about it, you wait till I take him out this week, he's going to be real salty. 
I guess we're all salty together. And with that, USC 251 was ready to go. And it shall be done tonight. Max Holloway is in the white trunks, Alexander Volkanovsky in the black and gold befitting a champion. Holloway's adjustments were immediately apparent. He controlled the rain. Eugene Behrman, when he fought Shane. His striking was diverse. Hits with the heel to the body. Holloway put it all together tonight. Often trading shot to shot with Volkanovski. Better round. I'd still go with Holloway, but still, it was certainly close. After knocking down the Aussie in round one. And again in round two. Oh, man, he's down again. Many believed the second blessed era was about to begin. I'd be lying if I didn't say Holloway's almost up three rounds here. He's looking a little sharper, throwing in good head kicks. We got and new on our hands. But Volkanovski was never going to let it be that easy. Nicely done. Very good takedown, but can he make it count? He adjusted, showed his versatility, and scored takedowns in the championship round. Seconds of this championship oh, fight. A late takedown for Volkanovski. The first real By the end of five rounds, the only question was who took the third. Ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds, for the winner by split decision, and still! Alex had successfully defended his title, but many believed Holloway had been roped. Listen, man, you can't leave it to these guys. You got some bad judging. Anybody have Volkanovski? I think Max Holloway won the fight. I thought the fight was a robbery. I thought Max um, did enough to win. I gave him three rounds out of five. I thought Max won the fight. I thought Max might have won it, but it was close, man, in that third round. I had Max up 3-2. to two. Yeah, I think it was a robbery. I, I had a 3-2 for Holloway. I had a three rounds to two Max. And so again, the world began to doubt this tenacious featherweight champion. But that was all about to change. 11 world champions have come off this show, but one of the most important things that we give to you are your coaches. In 2021, after coaching his team to victory in both divisions on the Ultimate Fighter. Let him go, let him go! Let's fucking go. Until you had no chance. The stage was set for Volkanovski to face rival coach Brian Ortega at UFC 266. Nicknamed T-City for his love for triangle submissions, Ortega is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt and a submission specialist. Although many believed Ortega couldn't match Volkanovski's stand-up, there was a resounding consensus that if T-City got a hold of his neck, there would be a new featherweight champion. Not good! That's it! That's it! He deserves to be here. He deserves to be here. I'll give him that. But he ain't taking the belt. He don't deserve it. Fuck the belt. I'm coming for your head. I'm excited, I'm, man. I'm not sure I've ever seen Alexander Volkanovsky in this type of shape. He was He's bouncing fit. around before he hit the scale on Friday. This fight was to go down, of course, back in March. A little delay due to COVID-19, and it shall be done tonight. The fight began as expected. A kickboxing match with Volk mostly piecing up Ortega in the first 13 minutes. And then, it happened. He made himself a star. Ortega had been here many times before. He knew he was seconds away from tasting featherweight gold. But what he didn't know was that Volkanovski doesn't breathe air. He breathes greatness. Ortega, he might go to sleep. The grip is well For now, Volkanovski oh. is out. Through sheer grit and will, Volk's neck outlasted every one of Ortega's submission attempts. world watching as he pulled off some of the greatest submission escapes in UFC history, Alexander the Great Volkanovski cemented his place as the reigning featherweight king. But this time, 
it wasn't just Volk and his team who believed it. The entire world was finally beginning to realize the true greatness of this Australian powerhouse. Alexander Volkanovsky. Is it time to put some respect on that man's name? How does Volkanovsky get out of that, that, that guillotine? Ortega's got his legs crossed, so that kind of guillotine with a guy like that is deaf. It was off. Fuck, I'm about to lose the belt deep. I was just waiting for the tap, and it never came. And uh, and he got out, and I was like, shit, this is a tough motherfucker. That fucking savage, it's like, not today, bitch. I'd rather die. With the 10-fight win streak in the UFC, two title defenses, and the world on his side, Volkanovski had the wind in his sails. And as always, there was something cooking with Volk. The majority of people know full well that Max Holloway has probably earned another shot at Alexander Volkanovsky. After a great year that he had, the wins against Cater, the wins against Yair Rodriguez, he was absolutely mustered. If he was fit, this would be him. It's not going to be him, so it's Korean Zombie. Korean Zombie will just keep walking forward. That's why it's an entertaining fight. And so in 2022, he faced a declining Korean Zombie at UFC 273. No one really thought Zombie had a chance. And he didn't. Chan Sung Jung, the undisputed UFC featherweight championship, Ready. Ready. is Ready. on the line. It was a striking masterclass and a complete shutout, landing a self-proclaimed 141 significant strikes. Volkanovski continuing oh, to touch him. Yes, right. Big shot on the feet. Featherweight certainly would have crumbled. The fight ended 45 seconds into the fourth round. Down again, I think it's safe to, to say her might jump in. Yeah. That's, that's it, it. That's, that's it. it, that's it, that's it. And still that's the it. best featherweight in the world, make it 21 in a row! Bold Volkanovski had truly arrived, and he was really starting to own the crown. Today you're, you're talking to the champ, you know what I mean? And that's something that I have, you know, I want to wear this uh, crown, you know what I mean? I earned it, you know what I mean? I deserve it, so I don't have to feel like I'm being cocky by owning that crown that I, I deserve to wear. But as much as he felt he deserved it, there was still one man he knew he had to silence. All I heard was you guys talking about damage. We're talking about damage here. Are oh, you guys damage this, damage that. I'm known for taking damage, and he's known for not giving it, so let's get it. Three months later, he would meet Max Holloway in the highly anticipated trilogy match at UFC 276. Oh my goodness, I'm excited. This is it. 25 years from now, they will be talking about this rivalry series. This time, it wasn't even close. Volkanovski was always a step ahead, operating at a speed Max could not compute. And it seems like Holloway is just a step Ooh. behind. Oh my goodness, and now he's pouring it on. I mean, we've never seen Holloway this busted up before. No. I mean, his face is a mess. This is not a close fight. And still! In the end, the champ won all five rounds unanimously and silenced any doubt between him and Max Holloway. I'm here with the winner and still champion Alexander Volkanovsky with a virtuoso performance tonight. You, you came into this fight, a close second fight. This one was not close. You separated yourself from Max Holloway tonight. But there was just one problem. Alex Volkanovsky had cleaned out the top contenders of his division. Who else could challenge the now number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world? Where is this short guy? Where? Is there anything you want to say to the pound-for-pound -pound best fighter in the world, Alexander Volkanovsky? I didn't see this short guy. Bring him here. With no clear contender at featherweight, Volk set his sights on the lightweight crown against the dominant Dagestani protege of former pound-for-pound -pound number one, Khabib Nurmagomedov. His name? Islam Makhachev, the new undisputed lightweight champion in the world. Islam Makhachev is a former combat sambo world champion. His unstoppable 11 to no run to lightweight gold earned him the illustrious and overused title as the boogeyman of his division. Though he'd shown glimpses of his precision timing and striking, Makhachev's soul-crushing pressure, his wrestling, and his ability to take you to the ground and finish you was always at the forefront of his opponent's minds, including Volkanovski. Islam, you're gonna need, all right, you need to do the rounds of the wrestling and take down the fence and getting back up just in case we've got to get there. What do you think about a matchup with Volk? This guy is so small. I, I'm gonna stop this guy. Everyone thinks I'm short. And then I'm punching them in the face, and then next minute they you know, their face changes real quick. I can take them down and finish him there, because I know this guy is so small, he's not my level. You know, these little short legs, they're very easy to get back to my feet, so 
uh, that's going to be one hard thing. Getting me down is going to be a problem. If you do, I'm bouncing right back up and it's going to be stand up. You want to jump 155? Let's do this. And so the stage was set for the two champions to go head to head in one of 2023's most highly anticipated fights, where once again, the world would doubt Volkanovski's ability to hold his own against a taller and heavier man. I think Islam is just going to be too much for him. I think Islam has better chances to win, honestly. Still picking Makachev, I think the wrestling and the grapple will be too much. Islam's going to win the fight. But this was nothing new to the Aussie. 2010. Before Alex began his mixed martial arts career, he weighed 214 pounds and played rugby league as one of the front rowers, who are usually the two largest men in the team. He was running into men twice his size and dragging them to the ground, then getting up and doing it all over again for 80 minutes, every game. And when he finally made the switch to MMA at 23, he began his amateur career by knocking out middleweights and his professional career by knocking out welterweights. Moving up to lightweight was not going to be an issue. Oh, you know what I mean? So I'm looking forward to people thinking that, oh, he's not going to be able to handle the power. Trust me, anyone that knows me, I'm like, trust me, I'm strong. And now! This fight is my world! As the fight began, there was just one question on everyone's mind. Can Makhachev take the featherweight champion to the ground and finish him? The answer became clear in the first round. It was immediately competitive, with both fighters landing successfully. Volkanovski stumbled Islam first, but Makashev replied with a knockdown of his own. And then, the destroyer from Dagestan did what he does to everyone. He took Volk to the ground. But somehow, despite being in the losing position, Volk never really looked like he was ever in trouble. As the fight continued, it seemed more and more clear that Volk's strength was actually overwhelming the lightweight champion. The fight ended with Volk dropping Islam with a perfectly placed right hand, then dishing out his signature ground and pound until the closing bell. As Volkanovski stood up from a more damaged and defeated opponent, the decision seemed clear. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and still the Although Volkanovski looked like he was moments from breaking Islam at the end of round five, the lightweight king had done enough to secure the crown. I'm coming for you guys! The Volk had just tasted defeat for the first time in almost a decade. But in the eyes of the world, there was a new contender for the lightweight crown. And this short guy was standing tall over the body of the king. It was Alex, real, real, you know, strong guy. Short but strong. And he's the best fighter in the world. He was, but... But like a true reigning champion, there was only one thing on his mind. As Volkanovski took a run at the lightweight king, Yair Rodriguez was busy defeating Josh Emmett to become the interim featherweight champion. Oh, that's locked up. That's He's it. He stops! That's it! Rodriguez, UFC champion! Wow! He submits Josh Emmett to And bold Volk wasn't wasting any time. Let's just get a over and done So on July 8th at UFC 290, Alexander Volkanovski and Yair Rodriguez will unify the featherweight title in what is certain to be an explosive event. Yair is one of the UFC's most dynamic strikers. His ability to throw unorthodox strikes from anywhere means he can shut the lights out at any time. He is a real problem for anyone in the division. But if there's one thing you should know about Alexander the Great Volkanovsky, it's that there should be no doubt.